Amen. Let's see what, what's on your heart, what you want to hear. There are two things. One topic is, who do you agree with? Who are you agreeing with? First one. Let's go to Matthew. Before you go to Matthew, go to Psalms 111. Go to the book of Psalms. We had an amazing service this morning in Dubai. Amazing, amazing, amazing service. We thank God for this mercy. Psalms 111, that can be the worst, verse number 5. Psalms triple 1, verse number 5. If you're there with me, say loud, Amen. He says, He has given meat, or He has given food, or He has given bread unto those who fear Him. Look at the next part. He says, He will ever be mindful of His covenant. Let's read the last part again. He says, It is God who has given us food. It is God who gives us meat to those who do what? Fear Him. Next part he says, He will ever be mindful of His covenant. Hallelujah. God is never forgetful, but He's mindful. Are you with me? He's mindful of His promises. He's mindful of His contract. The covenant, the new word or the new modern day English for covenant is what? Contract. The modern day word for today is agreement. Amen. Are you with me, church? Modern day word for covenant in the Bible says what? Is that God is ever mindful of His agreement. He's ever mindful of His word. There's never a slip of tongue with God. Are you with me? God does not speak and then think. No. He thinks before what He says. He says before, you know, before, before He wants to speak it out. He always gives it a thought. Sometimes we have, oh sorry, sorry, it's a slip of tongue. Oh sorry, I did not mean this. We have that. But with God, He doesn't have that issue. He says what He means and means what He says. Amen. Are you with me? He said, it is God who gives meat to those who fear Him. That word, to fear, is not that we're afraid. No, no. There is a reverential trust. The original translation of those who fear Him is reverential trust in God. Those who put their trust in God, there will always be food on the table. Amen. Amen. Go to Psalms 105. I'm trying to still lay the foundation for today's topic. Psalms 105. Verse number 8. Verse number 8. See what does he say. It is God who has remembered his covenant for what? Ever. Oh, come on guys. Are you with me? God doesn't have a memory loss. Are you with me? Look at what he says. He has remembered his covenant forever. And then he says what? The word which he has commanded for a thousand generations. What a word that is. If you believe that God is giving you a promise, then you also believe that promise is not restricted to you. That when you are dead it is over. No. It is for a thousand generations in your life. On, guys, are you with me? Amen. Don't be sad because oh Lord, thank you God for the promise for me. And but by the time I go to the grave, it is over. No, 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 it is beyond the grave. That's what he said. His word is for what a thousand generations. Forget about everybody else. Pray, God, your promise will stay for a thousand generations in my lineage, in my bloodline. Come on, guys, Amen. are you with me? Amen. For Amen. a thousand generations to come, your word will be alive, your word will be active. Go to the next verse. He says, which, command, which covenant he has made with Abraham and his oath with Isaac and confirmed the same with Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. By the way, who's the, who, who's the, who's the firstborn of, of Jacob? Who's the firstborn of Jacob? Firstborn of Jacob. The firstborn of Abraham is who? As for the covenant is Isaac. Next one. The firstborn of Isaac is who? The firstborn of Isaac is who? Esau. But he took his name off. He erased his name. 
And Jacob wrote his name inside that. Now who's the firstborn of Jacob? I won't trouble you. Reuben. Reuben is the firstborn. But look at what the word of God is. The way it is. It is the Bible says it starts with Abraham. Covenant with Abraham. He says his covenant he made with Abraham. And also an oath, a promise with Isaac. Next thing he says what? He has confirmed the same with Jacob as for the Lord's concern. And next moment he says what? Israel. He should have been Reuben. Reuben wrote his name off. When he missed with his father, the blessing did not go automatically to him. God shut him off there. May it not be the portion of your children. That the promises are only for you and not for your children. Your children will not mess with God. Come on, are you with the church? Your children will not mess with God. If you are enjoying the promise, your son has to enjoy. Your daughter has to enjoy. Their sons, sons has to enjoy. Your sons, sons, sons and sons, they should enjoy. Amen. He's the same God of Abraham. He's the same God of Jacob. He doesn't, you never find the God of Abraham and that's it. No, he's a God of Isaac. He's not just an Isaac. He's a God of Jacob. And next thing it is what? God of Isaac. He should have also been God of Reuben. Am I making some sense? The children that are born to you, they will carry the promises of God in their life. That it shall be said, oh, he's not just the God of your, your name, but he's also the God of your son that you're giving birth to. Keep reading. He says what? Say unto them, uh, say, unto, uh, say unto thee, I will give the land of Canaan, the promised land, the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers or just transitioners or sojourners in it, when they went from one nation to another nation, from one kingdom to another kingdom. Verse 14, can you read it with me? He says what? He permitted no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved the kings for your sakes. Listen, I want you to catch this word. No man will do you any wrong. Come on church, the word of God is alive. The word of God is living. The word of, the word of God is even alive today. If the word of God was a life of them that no man could do any wrong, then the same word of God with us. No man will do you any wrong. Come on guys, are you with me? Bless somebody around you and say, no man will do you any wrong. No woman will do any wrong. Are you with me? You look at what he says, verse number 15. Come on, this, this is amazing. Come on, look at what he says. What did he say? He reproved the kings for their sake. Say what? He said it. He says what? Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That God even did what? He rebuked and rather he warned the kings of the land. Don't touch my anointed. That means in the eyes of God, prophets are more having more preference. Come on guys. They have a higher calling than the kings. He says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet. Anybody anointed of the Lord in this place, then you are privileged. Your privilege is higher than the king's. Come on guys, the privilege that you and I, if you say you are anointed of the Lord, your privilege is higher than the richest of the richest. Listen, this is your portion in Jesus. When you are in trouble, pray these prayers. Lord, your word says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. This is your word for today. This is the promise of God for us. That touch not. Don't touch him. And if you look at the word of God. If you look at the history of the word of God. If anybody has touched the anointed of the Lord. Has had it from God. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm someone who, who has experienced this word. An umpteen number of times. An umpteen number of times. It's like. It's a story of our lives. Anybody trying to touch us. Anybody trying to touch me. Or touch my wife. Or touch my children. Anything that is pertaining to us. Has always been messed around. Has, has had it. Many years back I wrote a song and someone was recording and he was one of the engineers to, uh, to, 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 to equalize the song. He was one of the engineers to do what? The, the uh, mastering that song. And when he heard it, he started making fun of it. I didn't know this. I walked away and he was started making fun of the lyrics. He started making fun of the, of the, of the, of the melody. It was unbelievable. 
Little did I know that next day when I go, hey, where is this guy? What happened? He was supposed to be doing master. Has he completed? My friend told me he met with a severe accident after he left this place. He was wearing a helmet. He was on his bike. He was wearing a helmet. The helmet went off. He injured his head. When I got to know that he was completely bandaged. And my friend told me, you know, Kevin, when you left this place, this guy was making fun of your song. He didn't even reach home. He got it. I've seen many people. I've, some, I've seen some people who have landed in jail also. So I know what the power of this word is. Touch not my anointed and do my profit no harm. Amen. You don't have to fight your battles. Leave it in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Leave it in the hands of the Lord. Amen. When somebody is speaking ill about you, don't go and slap that person. Let the Lord fight on your behalf. And nobody Amen. has won a good the Lord. Nobody has ever won before the Lord. Are you with me, church? Now, why did I bring you here to this thing? Listen, as far as that agreement of God is concerned, it is settled forever. Hallelujah. In the book of Psalms 119, it says what? Forever your word is settled in heaven. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never fade, never pass away. It shall remain. It is settled. So as far as God's covenant is concerned, as far as God's agreement is concerned, as far as God's contract is concerned towards us, it is ever settled. And he says what? It's not just for our generation, for thousand generations. Amen. And the covenant has not changed even today. Touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. Hallelujah. Are you anointed of the Lord? Amen. Come on, says, are you anointed of the Lord? Amen. Then bless and say, nobody is allowed to touch you because you're anointed of the Lord. Amen. If they're touching you, they're touching God's word. If they're touching you, they're touching God's covenant. Hallelujah. Now, if, 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 listen, the Bible says the promise of God, the covenant of God, the, the thing that God speaks towards us, the promises, they are what? Yes, and they are amen. The promises of God towards us, they are yes, and they are what? It's already done. It's already done. Yes, and amen. So there's no two ways about it. God did not say, see, God does not tease us with his promises. Sometimes as parents, we tease our children. We say something, you do this, I will give you this. And when the time comes, you know, no, I change my mind. We sometimes go back on our own word. But as far as God is concerned, He never goes back on His word. Amen. His promises are ever settled. Amen. I go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 18. It's a very, 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 very familiar, familiar scripture in the Bible. We have prayed it, we have preached it, we have sung it, we have done a whole lot of things in this. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verse number 19. Read from 18, but my emphasis, I'm going to stay on verse number 19. Let's read from 18. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, truly I say to you, Jesus is speaking, whosoever shall bind on earth. Whatsoever you shall bind on ever shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever that you loosen on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now look at verse number 19. He says what? Again I say unto you. He's emphasizing. He says, again. Pay attention he said. Again I say unto you. If two of you shall agree on earth as touch, touching anything that shall be that they shall ask. What shall happen? It shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. Can we read it one more time? Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. The general understanding is, or the general take of take of this scripture is, when people come together in prayer, when two of people come together, whether friends, whether families, whether spouses, whether family, whether whether we are in the church, he says the two of you shall agree, and we call upon the Lord, and we ask, and anything touching the earth, anything concerning the earth, and when we ask, he says what it shall be done. Normally a general thing here. If two people come together and they are asking God. If two people come together in agreement and they are in unison on what they are asking before God, it shall be done. That's what it is. A normal understanding is correct. 
But there is another principle that can also be attached to this. If the principle of agreement works when people come together in prayer, when people agree together on doing something that touches the earth and you bring it before God, if that principle works and there is a principle also works in the negative. Hallelujah. If this principle works in the positive when people come together and they pray and ask God, then this principle could also mean that it can work in the negative. Watch out with whom you are agreeing. Hallelujah. Everybody just went very quiet. I'll prove it to you from the word of God. Be careful with whom are you agreeing. Sometimes you don't need a person that you have to agree. Sometimes you are in agreement with your own self with something that is not from God. For example, don't agree with fear. Be careful. Be careful. That's a negative thing. Fear comes to steal. Fear comes to stop. Fear comes to stall. Fear comes is a lie. By the way, way, what is the acronym for fear? Anybody knows what's an acronym for fear? By the way, how do we spell fear? It's not an English class. F-E-A-R. What's an acronym for that? False evidence appearing real. It's a false evidence. It just appears to be real. That's fear. That's it. It is not true. It's fake. It's a fake evidence. And many a times, then when we agree with fear, it comes to pass. That's why, be careful. You don't need someone that you have to agree or don't agree with. There are sometimes, there are certain thoughts that are going through you, that are going through your mind. There are certain emotions that are crossing your mind. Be careful. Are you in agreement with that fear, with that emotion? Be careful. Because why? Jesus said, if you shall agree, it shall come to pass. I'll show you an example. Go to the book of Job. Please don't close this. If you want to keep a bookmark, keep a bookmark. We'll come back later. We'll see how it works. But I want to show you the power of agreement with fear. The power of agreement with fear. Go to the book of Job and stay there. Go to the book of Job. Anybody knows Job? Yeah, if you need a job, you can go to Job. Yeah? If you need a job, you can visit Job, okay? He'll give you a nice job. Now, let's give a background of Job, right? Let's give a background to Job. By the way, was Job a righteous man? God testified. Was he a man of integrity? God testified, yes. Was anybody like him at the face of, on the face of the earth? It was not city, it was not village, it was not country or state. He says, when he was having a conversation with the devil, he said, have you considered my servant Job? There is nobody like him on the face of the earth. This is God testifying. This man is a righteous man. This man has no guile in his mouth, no filth in his mouth. There is no sin in his mouth. This man, as a matter of fact, he is walking with the integrity of his heart. There is nobody like him. God testifying. God testified about you. And then the devil said, no, 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 no. You know why he's holding on to integrity? Because you have got a covering over his life. Open the covering for me. Open the hedge. Open the defense system and see what happens. And God said, okay, go ahead. Open. And the Bible says what? The, the devil struck his business and wiped it out overnight. Not gradually. Overnight everything was wiped off. Not only was the business wiped off, the wealth was wiped off. His children were wiped off overnight. Hallelujah. Sometimes we can't handle the death of one person in our life. Sometimes it's difficult to handle one death, whether it's a dad or mom, they're old aged, or a one person that we hear the Bible says all his sons and daughters were wiped off. Overnight. Multiple deaths in one night. Yet the Bible says there was something about this joke. He was holding on to the integrity. He was not Blaming God. He didn't curse God. There was no guile in his mouth. There was no complaint in his mouth. And then he said, Lord, I know. And then the, 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 when Satan went back to God, he said, no, 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 give me one more chance. I want to touch him personally. I want to be physical with him. I want to touch him, see what he does. He said, go ahead. God gave him permission. The Bible says he had souls from the 
from the in the scalp to the sole of his feet, everywhere. He can't sit, he can't walk, he can't sleep, he can't do anything. He had sores all over the body. And at that point in time, the wife said, What? Are you still holding on to your integrity? Are you still holding on to God? Are you still holding on being faithful to God? She said, You foolish woman, keep quiet. He didn't agree with his wife. He had every reason to agree with his wife at that point in time. Everything was overnight, everything was wiped out. And now he's in pain, he's suffering, he's in agony. He said, no, blessed be the name of the Lord. It is God who's given, God has taken away. Amen. You're still holding on with his integrity. He didn't sin with, the Bible says, he didn't sin with his words. He didn't sin with his lips. He didn't sin with what came out of his mouth. Was Job a righteous man? Was Job an amazing holy man? Yet the Bible says it was all wiped off. Yet the Bible says he lost his children. Yet the Bible says he became overnight, literally business wiped off. Overnight everything. This man was a healthy man. This man, the Bible says, when he walked on the street, everybody stood up. When everybody, when, when, when he was in the congregation, the moment he opened his mouth, people were like, where did he get this wisdom? They would be like gluten, the adult, the, the elderly people, the veterans, the young people. They would make room and they would just listen to this man's wisdom. That's the kind of honor this man had. That's the kind of thing that God had made this man. And everything had went up overnight. But the Bible says there was an issue with this guy. Go to chapter 3. That's why I said, don't agree with fear. Be careful with whom are you agreeing with. Hallelujah. Look at verse number 23. Look at well, not 23, verse number 25. See what the Bible says. When he lost everything, he is still conversating with his counselors. She says, for the thing which I greatly feared. Come on, church, are you with me? Yeah, verse number 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And the thing which I was afraid of is come unto me. Did you read that? Was he a righteous man? Yes. Was he a man of integrity? Yes. Was there uh, any any uh, uh, was there any guile in his mouth? No, nothing, nothing of that stuff. But he kept holding up. Even though he lost everything, he says, God, let your name be blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But look at this man. He had an internal issue which was not surfacing up. And look at this man. He was having this fear that he was carrying deep inside. What does he say? For this very thing, I greatly fear that it came to pass. This thing that I was afraid of that is inside. Listen, there are times that we are afraid that is inside of us. We don't bring it out. Maybe there are, our spouses may not know. Our best friend may not know. Our parents may not know. But there is some fear that we constantly carry. Listen, stop agreeing with that fear. Was there an issue with his righteousness? Not at all. Was he a man that walked in holiness before God? Not at all. He was holy. There was never an issue. But there was deep inside that there was an agreement with the fear that he had. Have you ever come across me making this sentence? I'm afraid like I might fail this time. Yes. I have this fear like I don't think it is going to happen. I, you know we quickly agree with fear. Oh, I, I, I have this strange feeling like that fear inside I don't think so I'm going to pass. I'm going to succeed. I, I feel like I'm going to be, you know, it's just going to fail. I'm going to, listen, don't agree with your fear. Am I making sense just today? If two of you, listen, that two of you don't make fear your partner. Don't make, don't make friendship with fear. Don't agree with it because if the two of you should not agree on anything touching the earth. Listen, was anything touching the earth as far as his business was concerned? It was here. Business is not done in heaven. It's here. Concerning his children, was it here? Yes. Was his physical body touching the earth? Yes, yes, it was here. But he had a quiet thing happening. He said, I was afraid of this thing and it actually came to pass. I was afraid of this thing. Look at somebody and say, don't fear. Are you with me? More than that, more than that, more than that. Don't agree with fear. 
Don't agree with your apprehension. We call this, oh, I have, I have this apprehension. I have this kind of a gut feeling. I have this. Listen, don't agree with fear. Agree with God's word. Amen. Agree with the promises of God. Amen. Agree, Amen. agree with the word of God. Are you with me, church? Don't agree. Oh, I have a feeling that my children are going to step out. They might meet with an accident. I have a... Listen, don't agree with that fear. Speak over your children. They are under the hedge. What did he say? God, please open the hedge. I will touch. That means the hedge was around their children also. The hedge was around his business also. When God opened up, then he touched the children. Listen, when your children step out of the house, don't fear. The hedge of God, the covering of God, the, the protection of God, the defense system of God is around your children. Amen. Amen. Oh, I woke up in the morning and I have this kind of a sense that is making me uneasy. I think I'm going to meet with an accident. Don't meet, don't, don't agree with fear. Are you in the church? Be careful with whom are you agreeing with. If there are some people who are trying to instill fear in you, don't agree with them. Look at Job. He didn't agree with his wife. So if your spouse is instilling fear, I'll say it loudly. If your spouse, whom you love the most, if that person is instilling fear, don't agree. Don't get emotional. Look at somebody, don't get emotional. Don't get, oh, he's the love of my life. And she's the love of my life. I have to agree. No, don't agree. If there is something that is contrary, that is against the word of God, do not agree. And even the children, I want to say, if there is something to do with your parents that is contrary to the word of God, don't agree. Oh, come on, nobody wants to say anything like that. Don't agree with don't agree with your best friend. If that best friend is trying to instill fear, if that person is trying to instill fear into your life, don't agree. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church this morning? This evening. Turn your Bibles with me in the book of Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. What does the Bible say? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has not given us a spirit of timidness. God has not given us a spirit of nervousness. God has not given us a spirit of panic. Come on, guys. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Amen. Amen. Please turn your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Be careful with whom you are agreeing with. Watch it. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Don't blame it on anybody else. Watch out with whom are you agreeing. Chapter 5. Stay there. I'll tell you where to go. The Bible says Jesus was preaching. And while he was preaching, people were following him. Crowds were there. And the Bible says he came to the seashore. And while he was preaching, there was a boat that was vacant. And he got into the boat that belonged to Simon, who became Peter later, who became an apostle, a disciple of Jesus Christ. And it was the boat was vacant and he, he trusted and he continued to preach. The moment he finished preaching, he called Peter and he said, Come on, get into the boat, let's go fishing. Now go back to, look at verse number Verse number 3, verse chapter 5, verse number 3. He entered into the boat, one of the boat, which was Simon's, and asked him that he would thrust out a little bit from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the boat. When he had ceased speaking, when he stopped, when he finished speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into where? Into the deep. Let's go back deep. Let's go back day straight into the deep. And he says what? And let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled the whole night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net broke. What a net breaking catch that was. Now, why did I bring you here? Be careful whom you agree with. May I ask a question? Did he go with his friends fishing the whole night? Did they bring anything? 
they didn't bring anything. When they fished the whole night, do you think they would have, listen, those days didn't have motorboats, they had to row it themselves. So what do you think would be the condition these guys have been? He says, we have toiled, we have labored the whole night. Do you think they would have come back home tired? Yeah, they've come back home tired. They came back with nothing. Then they come back home with completely tired and famished. And if you look at the scripture, there are another place, they were washing their necks. And in the midst of all that, in the midst of all that, in the midst of all that, Jesus says, can you go back into the deep? Let's go back into the deep. Do you think Peter had a reason to say no to Jesus that day? He had every reason to say no. Why? He was tired. He had every reason to say, I'm disappointed because this is not the time. Uh, we came, we fished the whole night and we, 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 we came back with nothing. He had every reason to disagree. He had every reason to uh, disagree with Jesus at that point. And Lord, this is not the time to fish. Fishing is done in the night. This is not the right time to go. This is not the right time to go. He had every reason to say, Lord, I'm ready to go with you. Can we catch up on some sleep? And in the night, we'll take you back again into the deep. He had every reason to postpone. Be careful before you agree with your experience. He experienced failure. He experienced nothing in his hand. Are you with me, church? Don't agree always with your experience. If your experience has been failure, don't agree with it. Amen. Oh, wants Amen. To say don't be, uh, don't agree, oh I'm tired, I cannot pray anymore, pastor I'm very tired, I cannot read the Bible, don't agree with your tiredness, Amen. let's put it in another word, let's put another good word, don't agree with your excuse, because he had every, every excuse, he could have had the best excuse with it, but he did not agree with that, no, 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 no. I'm going to go, what did he do? On the contrary, he agreed. He agreed at your word. At your word, I'm going back. He could have easily said, Lord, I'll go with you, but I'll go a little later. I'll just rest. Listen, don't, don't, don't agree with your procrastination. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it some other time. I'm very tired now. I'll do it later. Lord, I'll do it, but I'll do it later. Don't agree that you procrastinate for another time. Don't postpone when God is saying, He said what? Now. Launch out. Now means now. If God's word is coming, that the word that is coming to you and the word demands urgency. Now. Then agree. Don't say, Lord, I will do it, but I will do it later. Listen, don't agree with your experience. Your experience may say it's failure. Your experience may say you came empty handed. You tried, you tried and you, you failed. Listen, don't agree with your experience. Rather, agree with the word of God. You'll have a better experience. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says, Lord, at your word, at your, listen, be ready. If you have failed, go back to the word of God. Go back to so Lord, what's your word for? Lord, I'm tired, but what's your word for now? Listen, don't, 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 don't agree with lies. Listen, the Bible says what? It was, he said we toiled the whole night. We need to, we need to rest. Listen, don't think I have to wait for the tide. I have to wait for the right opportunity. I have to wait for the right weather. I have to, listen, at his word. If you know fishing, well, you know what I'm saying. Tides, there are tides, there are tides for conducive, suitable for fishing. So don't say, oh, when it is suitable. When the Lord gives the Lord is the Lord over tides also. He's the Lord over tides. He knows when to make the right tide and not the right tide. Are you with me, church? Look at somebody and say, don't, experience, don't uh, agree with your negative experiences. Come on, are you with me? Don't agree with your negative experiences. Are you with me? Don't be quick. If somebody is telling you, this is not the right time. Don't agree with that. Agree with God's time. In His time, He makes all things work. Well. 
Are you with me? Don't say this is not the right time. The condition is not right. The condition is not correct. Don't agree with it. It may be for the world. It may be the, in the market. It may be saying, "Oh, there is so much of lack of opportunity. This is not the condition. This is not the right time to invest. Oh, this is not the right time to change your job. This is not the right time to take this decision. Oh, the market condition is messed up. Oh, the economy is up and down. Oh, the timing is." Listen. Don't agree with what the market has to say. Agree what the maker has to say. I'll say it one more time. Don't agree with what the market has to say. Agree with what your maker has to say. In Jesus' name. Are you with me? That's what matters. The condition says, no, we failed in that place. But the maker says, go back, I'll give you success in the same old place. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Tell the Bible's bring the book of uh, to the book of Enoch. Enoch chapter 11. Uh, so there is no Enoch, okay. I'll... I love you, Lord. I have amazing people in my church. Go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. At the same time, may I ask you, we'll read two things together. Enoch, uh, Enoch I'm saying, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 5. At the same time, if you may open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 5 also. Genesis, Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Alright, let's read uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, everybody brews. Yeah? Chapter 11, verse number 5. Look at what he says. Come on, verse number 5. Are you with me, church? Are you good, church, today? Amen. Are you able to track with me? Amen. Great, awesome. You're amazing people. He says, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. And what was that testimony? He pleased God. Come on, are you with me? Let's read it one more time. I know some people are reading this for the first time in their life or hearing this. Let's read it one more time. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He says, by faith, he not translated that he should not see death. And he was not found. That means when death came knocking at his door, he was not found. When death came knocking at his door, Enoch had already been translated. He never saw death. Because God translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. May it be your testimony of your life. That your life pleases God. Come on guys, are you with me? May you carry this testimony. Listen, don't tell me I'm carrying this testimony and God healed my fever. God healed my bronchitis. No, that's not what it says. The testimony says, this man pleased God. Amen. Amen. Listen, don't be saying that, oh, I have this testimony, I'm driving a S, S500 Mercedes. That is not, there is no, there is no uh, fun, and there is no substance in that, in that, in that testimony. The testimony, what has substance, he pleased God. May you please God. Come on, are you with me? May you please God. Look at something. May you please God. Have this testimony. Have this testimony. Listen, have a testimony that you impress God. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Now go to Genesis chapter 5. Let's go back and break it down. What was his testimony? He pleased God. What do you mean by please God? The Bible says, can two walk together unless they have agreed? Can two walk together unless they be agreed? Can two walk together unless they have agreed with one another? Look at what he says. Chapter 5, verse number 21. He says what? Please, ma please, please, please pay attention to the numbers. Pay attention to the numbers, okay? There are some number games in this place. He says, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became a father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God how many years? 300 days. I'm oh, sorry, what did I say? 300 years. Absolutely. He walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 days. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Huh? Aiva, thank you. 
They are tracking with me. My church is awake. This is all though, or all together, Enoch lived 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. And he was no more because God took him away. 65 years he had the time of his life. Have fun, do whatever you want to do. But the moment he became a father, he wanted to be an example for his children. Come on guys, are you with me? Look at the way he conducted himself. 65 years, there is no mention of him walking with God. The moment he became a father of Methuselah, at the age of 65, the Bible says, from that day onwards, he wanted to be an example to his son, how to walk with father. How to walk with God about. For 300, he didn't walk for 300 weeks. He didn't walk for 300 months. He walked for 300 years. Not a joke. To walk with God for those number of years and to walk with God. This is the testimony of God that he walked and he walked faithfully. He pleased with God. See, the Bible says, can two walk together unless they be agreed? That means he agreed to walk with God. While God agreed to walk with him, he also agreed to walk with God. And the agreement of God is forever. Amen. What did I say agreement is called? Covenant. Amen. The contract as far as God has with us is forever. I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. When you go through the fire, I will be with you. When you're going through the water, the oh, water will not overwhelm you. When you go through the fire, the fire will not kindle. He said, I will be with you. Lo, Jesus said, lo, I am with you till the end of age. His covenant is forever. But here I'm highlighting it that this man, for the next 300 years, Enoch is walking in agreement with God. God, I'm going to agree with whatever you say. Whatever you ask me to do, I'm going to walk. And that's what pleased him. Come on guys, are you with me? He was not pleased with his offering or his tithe. He was pleased with the way he conducted himself faithfully before God. Am I making some sense to some fathers in this house? Before you expect your children to walk in the ways of the Lord. Before you expect your son or your daughter to walk in the ways of the Lord. Pray God before you leave this room. Lord, son, just remove the shoes. If they're running in the church, remove the shoes. Don't let the shoes make the sound because shoes distract. All the fathers in the house, make a prayer. That before your son and before your daughter, you would know what it means to conduct yourself. Walk faithfully before God. That this God, what's his name? Enoch was an example to his sons and to his daughters how to walk before God. They didn't need a pastor, they didn't need a priest, they didn't need a hey, follow that example, follow that man of God. No, no, they had a father whom they can look at. Come on, guys, talk to me. Ask God for grace. Because the Bible says something in this, something very, very, very beautiful. When sickness came knocking at his door, when old age sickness came knocking at his door, when old age aches and headaches and all that thing started coming uh, knocking at his door, when blood pressure came knocking at his door, when diabetes came knocking at his door, my this is aching and my that is aching and I'm in this, oh old age brother, oh I'm getting old, I'm having, listen church, don't agree. Because the Bible says when death came knocking at his door, God took him away. He's the same God of Enoch in our midst today. Amen. He's the same God who, who, who took her up Enoch. When trouble came knocking at his door, when tragedy came knocking at his door, God took him away. Why? Because the way he walked, it pleased God. Are you with me? Look at somebody and say, please God. Walk with God. Please God. Are you with me? When famine comes knocking at the door, God takes you away. When trouble in the city, when plagues come happening in the city, when plagues are released, God takes you away from that place. Amen. Be careful whom you are agreeing with. Watch out for the ones whom that you are agreeing with. Are you agreeing with God? Are you agreeing with what's happening in the market? Are you agreeing with God? Are you agreeing with people who are scornful? Are you agreeing with God? Are you agreeing with people who disagree with God's word? Hallelujah. Listen, don't agree with the enemy. May I ask a question? 
What comes to your mind? Okay, devil is a common enemy. Fine, that's settled. He's a he's a permanent enemy. What else do you think? Because what is a common understanding when you talk about uh, the enemy is doing this, the enemy is doing that? Even children say that. What do you mean by enemy? What is the enemy? What enemy we're talking about? Anybody? Anybody? We often come across a very church language, very churchy language. Very churchy language. Enemy. You pray against the enemy. The enemy will not prosper again. Who is this enemy, by the way? Is it a human being that we talk about? Because a common understanding sometimes is, oh, she's giving me trouble in the office. Oh, he's doing this to me. And we often look at people as enemies. Listen, listen, church. Move aside, people. There is something more deeper. Fear is your enemy. Doubt is your enemy. Unbelief is your enemy. Come on, guys. Talk to me. Nobody wants to say anything right now. Laziness is your enemy. These are the real enemies that do what? They keep on, keep on, keep on needling the ears. Listen, did the devil twist the arm of uh, Eve to eat the fruit? No. Did he become like one, a monster that he came in front of him and said, Buddy. No, no, no. He didn't do all that stuff. But he just whispered. Be careful what you are listening to. Amen. And when you're listening, are you in agreement with that? It was a simple suggestion. You eat it when you become like God. You become like one of him. Simple suggestion. He didn't twist his arm. He didn't twist the ears. He didn't slap her. He did not become like one monster in front of the her to eat. No, no. Simple suggestion in the back. Say, listen. You eat it, nothing is going to happen. Rather, you become like God. What happened? Did she agree? Did she agree? Yes. The whole world is suffering with her. She refused to agree or forgot to agree with God had already spoken. She, if, if she did what? Immediately give her a year to do what? To agree with what the devil had to say. Listen, lust is your enemy. Listen. It is not just the men who have lust, even women have. What does read the scripture very well? You have to read, go back to Genesis. Take your Bible, go back to Genesis tonight before you sleep. Go and check. When I said it is not the men who have lust issues, even the women have lust. Because the Bible says what? She saw it was good. Oh, all this time she did not see. All the time that food. But the Bible said she saw. Oh my. She lusted after it. Not just the men, even the women in the house. Be careful what you lust after. Oh, she's got that. I also want to have that. By the way, comparison is your enemy. Yes. Yes. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. It comes to do what? It comes to disturb you. It comes to knock you off your, your walk with God. Oh, how much they have. Oh, I also want to. Listen, hold a minute. Don't compare. Comparison with other families. Comparison with somebody else who is successful, somebody who is wealthy, somebody who is successful, somebody who is on another level. Don't compare yourself because that comparison can take you down. Amen. These are the real enemies. These are the real enemies that are doing what? Are speaking in our ear. Deal with the enemies. Don't agree with those enemies. Hallelujah. Don't agree. To do what? With something has to be done today. Don't say, I will do it tomorrow. Don't procrastinate. Procrastination is not from God. This is a real enemy. Am I making some sense to church today? Laziness, slothfulness is an enemy. Don't say, I will do it some other time. I'm too tired right now. Listen, by the way, excuse is an enemy. Excuse is an enemy. Listen, if you have one excuse, you'll always have an excuse next time. You have better excuse. Some excuses have become. It becomes. You know, sometimes excuse looks at very legit, very legal. Be careful. Hallelujah. And the real enemy, the devil, has bad loads of excuses for us. Are you with me? Oh, you worked instead of working nine hours today. You work fourteen hours. You're very tired. You have to sleep. No, no, no. Be careful whom you are agreeing with. Amen. Am I making some sense to just today? Amen.
don't agree with the lie. Oh, it happened to my father. It happened to my mother. It has been running. You know, go down. Listen, don't agree with what's happening to your father. It should be happening to you. Amen. Yeah. Agree with what the word of God. At your word, I'm going to let down. He had a net breaking breakthrough that day. He had a great house. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus in the Bible, he wanted to see Jesus, right? Take a time and read in, my, in Luke chapter 19. Zacchaeus, the short guy, he heard about the miracles of Jesus. He wanted to see who is he. He heard so much about it. But the Bible says he could not see Jesus because a crowd just thronged and surrounded Jesus. He jumped, he did whatever. He could not have a glimpse of nothing. And what the Bible says what? He had every reason to be disappointed go home. Listen, don't agree with your disappointments. Are you with me? Listen, depression is not your friend. Don't agree with depressions. Amen. These are the real enemies. Don't look at the person in the office who's trying to pull you down. That's not the real enemy. The real enemy is in and around you. Come on, guys, talk to me. He had every reason to be disappointed to go home. Oh, I'll come some other time. These people are there. They are always blocking my view. They are blocking my progress. They are standing in my way. Oh, they are not allowing me to do Oh, I cannot. I'll go home some other time. No, no, no. The Bible says he ran ahead. He climbed up the sycamore tree. And he had a great glimpse. What glimpse? He had a conversation with Jesus. Thank God he did not disagree. Thank God he did not agree with his disability. Was He was a short man. He had a physical disability. Why? Because people were all big and tall and empty. But this guy was a short man. Thank God he did not agree with his deficiency. Listen, don't agree with your deficiencies. Don't agree with your short fall. Oh, I don't I have only this much. I don't think so I can make it. Don't agree with it. Amen. Look to God who is all our sufficiency. He is all sufficient. Amen. He is Jehovah. Amen. He is El Shaddai. God who is more than enough. Amen. He's an all-sufficient God. Don't agree with, oh, because you have a problem, God knows how to bring compensation. The tree was his compensation. He agreed that day, I have to see Jesus. Don't agree with postponement. I'll see some of it. Don't agree, oh, I'm disappointed, I could not. I came with so much of zeal and passion, but look at this problem. Listen, don't agree with your problems. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you with me, church? Two people had the same problem. We'll arise and pray another two minutes. Two people had the same problem. Two people had the same problem, but two dif- those two people had two different results. Elimelech in the Bible. You remember Naomi's husband? Elimelech. There was famine in Bethlehem, Judah, the place of bread, the house of bread. He, the moment he saw famine in the place, he picked up his wife and his sons, two of his sons, and said, let's go. And they surged into a place, thinking that they're going to be all right. It's going to be safe. They went to a place called Moab. Long story short, the Bible says you're running away from famine, going to a place, thinking it is green on the other side, thinking it is safe on the other side. Listen, on the Lord's side, is greener, by the way. Amen. What happened to Elimelech? He died in a foreign land. Not only did he die, he died, both the sons died in that place. But there was another man who had a similar problem. His name is Isaac. He also faced severe, severe what you call famine. And he was about, he picked his back and he said, let me go to Egypt and be safe in that place. God told him, stay where you are. And the Bible says, Eli, uh, Isaac stayed in Gerar or Gerar. How are you want to pronounce it? He stayed in that place. And he stayed in that place. I did not say, no, you asked me to stay. Let me uh, get some bread from heaven. Let, no, 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 no. He didn't do all that stuff. In the famine, the Bible says, he sowed a seed. And in the same year, the Bible says, he reaped a hundredfold. Not hundred percent. Hundred times more. Hundredfold harvest. Am I making some sense, church? Listen, don't agree with your famine. 
agree with God's word. Amen. Because the Bible tells me it is God who keeps them alive even in famine. Into those who put their trust in Him. Amen. Those who fear God. He keeps them alive even in famine. So don't say, oh there is a famine happening. Oh there are lack of opportunities. You know pastor, you know there is a, the earth is going through economic downturn. Aren't there an ups and downs? I feel this market is like that. And the market, listen, don't agree with market conditions. Agree with the maker of your life. Amen. Are you are you getting what I'm saying, church? Yeah. Don't agree with the famine situation because the Bible tells me that God keeps them alive even in famine. Those who put their trust in Him, those who hope in God, those who fear God, He keeps them alive. Isaac was not just alive. The Bible says Isaac became a very rich man. He became more richer than the king of the land. He became more richer. Various livestock, various herds, various servants in the house. He became richer, more richer than the, than the king of the land. The king of the Philistines says, Sir, please go. You have become too great for us. We cannot handle you. You are more richer, more stronger. Leave this land. Simply because Isaac agreed with God's word in the midst of the famine. You ask me to stay, I'm staying. And you ask me to bake, I will be. Not only that, I will not waste my time in the famine. In the famine, I will sow the seed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the God whom we serve. Amen. Please don't agree with their situation. Don't agree with their experiences. Oh, because I failed that time. Don't agree with that. To you according to your faith. Can we arise and pray?